Great Bar School Complex on the north edge of Birmingham is well known for its sheer size. The secondary school is amongst Europe's biggest. Just the primary takes 450 children from 17 heritage backgrounds with a high special needs mix. We're really trying to develop skills throughout the school. We're really concentrating on the skills that will transfer from year group to year group and that the children can use outside of school as well. We use the universal skills, so we're looking at social skills as well as academic skills and we relate it all to the children's work. For us, a sea of faces, but for senior teacher Janet Bates and head Sue Corbet, a set of individual mathematicians. They've put hundreds of hours into developing systems that track the mathematical learning of each and every child. Another aspect of the new framework and what we're trying to do in our school is ensuring that we're meeting the universal skills in, in our everyday lessons and a lot of this sort of problem solving work lends itself to those skills such as making decisions, uh, working as a group, being able to speak out loud and all of those things. So on the tables when you go away... You and they've put yet more time into developing a skills-based curriculum. 20 kilometers. They believe tracking individuals and this new curriculum are the keys to progression in primary maths. We've always been very proud of the attainment the school and, and the children have been making. But what we wanted to do was, was go beyond that and, and try and make our achievements, our sort of our value added, a real success of the school. And it's good mathematical development as well as the universal skills because they use an a range of knowledge to, to solve the problems. We've always attained well, but we felt there was something extra we needed to do. And so we overhauled the curriculum, we reviewed where we were, and we decided that we needed to add an extra dimension. It's coming across, problem solving shouldn't just be sort of, you know, a once a week sort of thing at the end of a unit. It should be every single day, children should be exposed to some sort of problem. And as I said earlier, not just a word problem. We wanted to address that enjoyment aspect and we feel that this is the way forward that the children enjoy and they also achieve because it comes through a structured approach. It may seem in the classroom as though we're playing a game but there's real structure and planning and forethought behind it and that was thanks to Sue when we came in with a new vision and a new idea and we reviewed the whole school, the whole the very environment we changed. We've introduced practical activities, we've ensured those go throughout the school and we've also looked at how the children will best be able to acquire the mathematical skills and development. Savannah, oh, Savannah. Savannah. Yeah. I think we should start on the next line, me and you, and they can finish off the next line. So we've looked very much at speaking and listening, very much at partner work, rather than just having the children complete work within their books. So we're actually looking at personalised learning and we're looking at each small step of learning that each child needs to make next. But the change to personalised learning in maths challenged the school's assessment system. Starting with nursery, they've had to ensure systems have been put in place to track the children's achievements during the independent parts of the lessons. All the classroom professionals have had to think again about their role. They spend time standing back, noting the children's learning, and then designing ways to advance and extend this through higher level independent activities. We feel very strongly here that the individual is the heart of the school. And for a long time, Sue and I have tracked children through individual targets. So in mathematics, we'd sit down with the children and we'd say, how comfortable do you feel with this? OK, we're going to have a look at our targets in our books, OK? I can count on and back in ones from any small number and in tens from and back to zero. What do we think? Thumbs up? Not sure, or hmm, what do you think? 
I think, yeah, I think I know that you can all do that. Well done. Now, what we're going to do... And we talk through with the children, right from the earliest stages in schools, so that they can articulate how well and how comfortable they feel with a particular piece of, of work. And then we use that to set targets for the children. So in the children's books, you will see at the front a target sheet, and we can look through those, and we will talk through them. One reason that Great Bar has had to put so much work into reorganising maths is that the change to enquiry-based learning has coincided with the changes in the maths framework. Maths coordinator Christie believes the staff can only manage so much change and has drip-fed the new framework through. There's been an increase in lesson monitoring to see how Key Stage 1 are coping. Then again, not use four on the beginning. Oh, you've got two. Three. You've got a one, no, you've got a one and a... Uh, what was the other number? Two. Right, show me how you're going to add them together. Three. Three all together. I think to start implementing the framework, really, you need to first of all audit your school to find out what you're already doing because they're developments to the, the good teaching that's already going on in schools. Good morning, Mrs McConnell. Good morning. I think everybody's enjoying teaching maths a lot more and I think the children are enjoying it and we're beginning to see the progress that the children are making. Please try... Rebecca. 25. You think 25, which means that the biggest number that we think is in this. 20, 20. Well done, good lad. So we're moving into the year two objectives here, which is really good. For personalised learning to really work, it's important that I am really in touch with what the teachers are doing in the classroom. It isn't a catch-you-out situation, so all the teachers know in advance exactly what we're going to be looking for. Jordan, can you tell me what is 10 more than 3? We're going to split the number 11 up, and I'm just going to write it up here. My number 11 is made up of how many units, Jordan? OK, and how many tens, Dieran? I listen really carefully to Miss Roll, but I'm not quite sure what it is you have to do. So you can, like, tell other people how much it is. So you can so you're going to write a number sentence then. Hello, coming in. Hello, Mike. Hi, Come and sit down. We've judged it as um, a good lesson with many very good elements in it. You know, particularly impressive, which we'll come back to later, is the fact that the children were self-assessing against them. So we're going in very much as a critical friend to find all the positives and two or three things that we can point to that could actually point to further development. Which I know you've already identified this yourself, that when you work with your focus group, the blue group, I think yeah. you felt that there were too many sort of objectives to achieve and it's worth, you know, just making sure that you now go back and readdress that. Yeah, yeah. There were so many little bits to make up that yeah. one aspect, and I think, you know, like you say, it needs reinforcing just to make sure they've all got yes, they yeah. little really bits. Well, but it's just to make sure that the learning's been yeah. embedded. Add 12. Hey, Mrs. Bucky. The new framework has actually embedded itself on the old framework, and it quite clearly states at the beginning that they don't want to do new rocket science. They've introduced it to make sure the children feel valued. It, it's very much every child matters. <laughs> Lesson by lesson, things are working out. But the staff need to reflect on the children's progress over time. So all the senior staff take time to trawl through the children's books. Not quite a lower ability. She's, she's still, the last assessment, she's working at a 1C6, which has shown improvement from the foundation stage. Christy finds this evidence is useful for building a picture of how the new framework is settling in. And it's a good early warning system to tease out if practical activities are leading to progression. And good, again, the teacher's indicating the, you know, where she needs to go next, setting targets for them. Obviously, every SATs year, we analyse the data that comes back and we look for areas that we really need to, to push in and make progress in. And that comes when we track the children's work and we look at the data and we analyse the data that we get from the teachers and also through our raise online. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to book 
Raise Online is the recently introduced web-based system to disseminate school performance data. Thank you very much. Today, the local authority assessment coordinators helping Great Bar interpret its maths data. There's that confidence interval of plus or minus 0.7. If you took 0.7 away from your CBA... Data can have an immense impact on raising standards if it's used appropriately and also if it's understood it's not just those numbers at the end of a key stage. Uh, it is actually all the information that's available that tells you how children are progressing. That in turn relates to, to the learning and teaching that goes on from day to day in the classroom and the interactions between teachers and learners and learners actually knowing where they're going. But of course that doesn't refer to the starting point for the children and the tracking information that we've used from early years for the different cohorts does show a clear trend that we're generating improvements through the school. Add on to the two so you can work as well. It's also important when I'm looking at the data that I can put this into real terms as well. So I can actually know who the child is, whether the child has experienced difficulties before, and I can discuss this with the teachers. But it isn't just generating an improvement in average point scores and levels. And although we're very conscious about that, we're also looking at the independence of the children, the actual confidence and their motivation, which are particularly crucial as children go throughout Key Stage 2. Do you think this is going to help you with Jordan at home? Really good ideas. I've got something to add for top of the that I am going to do. I think it's some really good it's been important to keep parents informed during such a period of change. Maths workshops have been a big help to try to overcome misunderstandings. Pupils have been going home and saying that they've spent a lot of the day just playing. It's about problem solving and that comes into all three strands of mathematics in foundation stage. So not only are we asking children to learn facts, we're asking them to be able to use the number and that's a really important thing throughout the school that children can start to use logic and start to apply what they've learned about shapes, what they've learned about numbers and start to apply that to everyday situations and start to solve problems. The difficulty when addressing this is that parents think, oh my goodness me, you know, they're not getting what we class as the rigour of a proper lesson. There is, of course, that three-part lesson where you have your introduction, you know the skills you're going to teach, and then the children have individual areas to develop within the lesson and the plenary that draws it together. But it is really that individual learning for the children, so the children are grouped to their ability, and the task will be set to address that ability. But the whole learning, the skill we want to teach is addressed for the whole class through the three-part system as normal. It's the joy of handling numeracy, of, of actually taking away that fear that was with a previous generation perhaps of I can't do it. I think the important thing within this type of approach that we've used at Great Bar Primary is to initially look at the children. It's analysing the setbacks that you have, deciding why they've happened and what you can do about it. But it's always trying to improve the learning for the children. And we have to unlock that for the children and show them that it is enjoyable, that they can solve the problems. Nothing is unsolvable. We're there to help the children get to grips with it and actually enjoy mathematics. <laughs>